Okay, so in this slide, what I want to talk about is how the pathways, some of the pathways, are regulated by the two protein hormones called insulin and glucagon. And I just wanted to remind you that they are proteins. Uh, this is an example of something, and as you can see, that insulin has about maybe 40 amino acids, 20 each in two chains, and glucagon is also a small peptide about 20 amino acids long. So insulin and glucagon regulate various pathways by turning things on and off, inactivating and activated enzymes. And you can try to memorize a list, but a way that makes it easier is to think about the logic of the two hormones, what it is that they're trying to do, um, and what they're responding to. And then if you do that and if you understand what the various pathways accomplish, the logic actually works out just based on first principles. So if I were insulin, here is how I would summarize the logic of what it's trying to accomplish in the body. What it does is when blood gl glucose is high, insulin is secreted. So that's the signal. That's what it's trying to correct. And it serves two purposes. Its choice of pathways to inhibit and activate has two purposes. First of all, it's to bring those blood glucose levels down to a normal level. The second is to activate the energy storage pathways. If you see high blood glucose as a signal of you've just eaten a meal, you're full, that's why your blood glucose levels are high, that's the time when you need to have your energy pathway uh, enter the storage pathways active, and that's what it does. So how does it accomplish its mission? It activates all of those pathways that reduce glucose in the body by consuming it in some way, getting it out of the bloodstream, and it also activates those pathways that store energy. It also accomplishes its mission by shutting down pathways that are counteracting what it's trying to do. So it shuts down any pathways that produce glucose, and it also shuts path down pathways that break down the stored energy. So that way you don't have a competition between pathways that are consuming glucose being counteracted by pathways that are active, that are churning out glucose, etc. So it does both things. So let's see, um, what I'm going to do next is show you that list of pathways from the video that I did on naming them. And we're going to go through and see if we can identify which pathways are inhibited and or act, inhibited or activated just based on this logic alone. Okay, so the way that I'm going to mark those is by using smiley faces. And my logic here with insulin is insulin signals the fed state. It, it's turned on when you're a pretty happy person, when things are bright and sunny, um, and you've got lots of food around. And so yellow is a happy color, so that's the color I'm going to use for insulin. So a smiley face is, yellow smiley face is the symbol I'm going to use to indicate that insulin, which is yellow, has activated a pathway. Insulin likes that pathway and it wants to turn it on. On the other hand, if it wants to shut down a pathway, I'm going to do an inverted smiley face, um, which is as close as I could get to as a frown. I'm sure you could do better. Um, and also yellow to indicate that it's insulin that's doing it. Alright, so let's go and look at my list of pathways. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So from this list, which pathways do you predict that insulin would activate? 
Remember that what it wants to do is activate pathways that consume glucose or store energy. Okay, so let's go through each one. So starting with glycolysis, what does glycolysis do? It breaks down glucose and converts it into pyruvate. So it's taking glucose out of the picture. That's a way to consume it. And so, in fact, insulin inhibits or activates glycolysis. Glycogenolysis, what does it do? It breaks down glycogen into glucose. So it's essentially producing glucose. Insulin activates pathways that consume glucose. So it's, gonna, it's not going to activate that. Lipolysis breaks down triglycerides into glycerol and acetyl-CoA. That has nothing to do with glucose, but remember that insulin also activates pathways that store energy. This pathway is involved in energy storage, but it's going the other way. It's actually activating the energy stores. So insulin is going to not activate that one. Gluconeogenesis makes glucose. Once again, that's not consuming glucose, so it's not going to be activated. Glycogenesis makes glycogen from glucose. That's a way to consume glucose and also to store energy. So insulin is definitely going to like that pathway. Lipogenesis makes triglycerides from glycerol and acetyl-CoA or from dietary fats. That does nothing to do with glucose, but it is um, a storage form of en way to store energy, and so insulin is going to turn that on. Now, why the energy storage and glucose link? Well, if you think about it, if you are pulling um, triglycerides out of the picture um, by storing them, then your body is not going to burn them, and instead it will burn um, glucose. And that's what the um, body wants to do. It prefers to burn glucose first, if at all possible, any time that it's available. That's the first choice. Ketogenesis has nothing to do with glucose, and it is not involved in storing energy. All right, so that was um, insulin activation. So now what I'd like for you to do is, is to try applying that logic, but this time apply it to what pathways would insulin inhibit or turn off. Okay, so um, here's our list of pathways, and here's my reminder. Insulin is going to shut down pathways that produce glucose or break down stored energy. And what you should do is put an upside down yellow smiley face next to all of those that insulin will inhibit. Okay, so why don't you pause the video and go through and make a mental list. So how did you do? Here's what I got. Glycogenolysis breaks down glycogen into glucose, so it's producing glucose. So insulin is going to shut that pathway down. Lipolysis is breaking down triglycerides. That's, um, that's breaking down stored energy, so it's going to inhibit that. And gluconeogenesis is making glucose, so it's going to want to shut that down as well. So, that was insulin. So let's talk about glucagon. Glucagon serves the opposite purpose from insulin. What it does is it responds to low blood glucose and tries to correct that. So its overall mission is to raise blood glucose. Now, one thing that's different about glucagon is that glucagon doesn't mass directly with storage pathways. Its mission is very simple. It's all about the glucose. So how does it do that? For those pathways that produce glucose, it's going to activate it. And for those pathways that consume glucose, it's
that's going to inhibit it. And the net effect is that because of those actions, more glucose is going to be produced, less is going to be consumed, and it should raise uh, blood glucose levels. So let's look at how it does that. So for symbols here, what I'm going to use is gray. Gray because when you um, are producing glucagon, you're, you're hungry. This is um, the fasting um, enzyme. It's the fasting hormone, signals the fasting state, and people are usually pretty gloomy when they're doing that. So if it activates a pathway, um, it's going to be a gray smiley face, and if it inhibits a pathway, that means that glucagon is inhibiting that pathway. All right, so let's look at which pathways would glucagon activate. It activates pathways that produce glucose. Um, so breaking down glucose is not producing. Breaking down glycogen into glucose, that's producing. Lipolysis is not about glucose. Gluconeogenesis, making glucose from glycerol, that is definitely about making glucose. So that one is going to be activated too. Glycogen is going to not, it's going to do the opposite of producing glucose. It's going to take glucose out of the system. Um, and lipogenesis and ketogenesis have nothing to do with its mission. So the net effect is that it's going to be activating two pathways, both of which produce glucose. That is glycogenolysis, breakdown of glycogen, and gluconeogenesis, making new glucose from scratch, from glycerol and amino acids. All right, so your turn. Which of the pathways would gluc glucagon inhibit? So let's see how you did. I said pathways that consume glucose would be glycolysis and glycogenesis because it makes glycogen from the glucose. So it's going to want to inhibit those pathways. Okay, that's the logical thing. Um, and I think um, for our purposes, if, if you remember that, that will be fine. But there's a problem because actually Glucagon doesn't inhibit glycolysis. Um, it mainly has an inhibitory effect on glycogenesis, and that's the one place where this logic doesn't work quite work out. All right, so what I'd like for you to do is to look at the section on the top of page 310, it's a half page, it's called Hormones of Metabolism, and it talks about what insulin and glucagon do. Um, and I'd like for you to just look at our smiley face list and just check our facts. And I think that you'll see that this logic works to predict everything except for that one issue of glucagon and glycolysis. Then what I want you to do is to take that figure 8.2.1, 8.21 that I had you print out and label and add pathways to and use some sort of symbol to show which pathways are turned on and off by insulin and glucagon. Um, if, if you, to make this colors work so that you know which one is insulin, which one is glucagon, you could use colored pen try to use a happy color and a sad color or something that's obvious to you. Um, you can also try using an uppercase I and a lowercase I, uppercase G, lowercase G, etc. Something that makes sense to you so that you can quickly look at it and remember the code.